So we're finally on production subsidies and quotas, and in this video we're probably just going to get through the quotas. So let's just start. A production quota is an upper limit to the quantity of a good that may be produced in a specified period or a specific period, and a subsidy is a payment made by the government to a producer. So for example, the quota effect on market for milk. So we're going to have dairy farmers and they're going to want to limit the total production of milk to get a higher price. So they persuade the government to introduce a production quota on milk and that's the example that I have here in red. So the effects on of the quota depends the effects on quota. That's a really horrible English, but the effects of the quota depends on whether it is set above or below the equilibrium quantity. Now the government if the government introduce a quota above the equilibrium quantity, then nothing happens because the milk growers are already producing less than the quota. So let's imagine in this graph we have this red line uh, above the well to the to the right of this uh, equilibrium dot. Well nothing will happen because the milk growers are all, can already produce at the best level they can. Now, if the quota is set below the equilibrium quantity, now that has drastic effects. So there's really going to be like five different cases and I'm just going to go through each of them. So let's go through the decrease in supply first. And we know that with no quota, the price is $3 per ton and 16 million tons a year are produced and we have that here you can see it in this graph now each farmer is assigned a production limit that is less than the amount would be produced and supplied without a quota so each farmer can only produce a limited amount and, and that amount is less than what they usually produce without the quota so the total of all the farmers limit is equal to the quota any production in excess of the quota is illegal that's what well, a highlighted gray. The gray area is illegal. Now the quantity supplied becomes amount permitted by the quota. It is fixed and supply of milk is then, in this case, is inelastic at a quantity under the quota. So with a quota of 14 tons per year, quantity decreases to 14 million tons a year. So let's just jot that down in our graph. See this blue arrow that I'm drawing now? Well, that's the quantity decrease. So that's the quantity decrease. But this will cause another effect to happen. This will this quota that we set, or that the government set, will raise the, the, the milk price, or the price of milk. So we'll just reflect that in this graph that here. Let me change colors. We just reflect it with this big arrow that from a price of three, the price rises to five, uh, to five dollars per ton. So when the government sets the production quota, the market forces are free to determine prices, and the quota decreases supply and raises price. Now the quota also decreases the marginal cost. So the quota lowers the marginal cost of producing milk and we'll just reflect that here before we go anywhere else so then the marginal cost the cost falls and like so the quota lowers the marginal cost of producing milk and the marginal cost decreases because the farmers they produce less and stop using resources with the highest marginal cost so let's just finish drawing our horrible line here uh, there you go. So the cost falls. Now, this also leads to inefficiency. So the quota results in underproduction, and the marginal social benefit at the quantity be produced is equal to the increased market price, which is five dollars, and the marginal social cost at the quantity produced decreases and is less than the market price. So before, the marginal social benefit is equal to the marginal social cost. Now the marginal social benefit exceeds the marginal social cost, and from that, we can we know that a dead weight loss arises, which is this gray area that we have here. Now, there's an incentive to cheat and overproduce for the farmers. The quota 
creates an incentive to cheat. It produces more than if a producer produces more than the individual production limit, which with the quota, the price exceeds marginal marginal cost. So if the farmers produce more than their individual limit, then they make a larger profit by making one more unit. So if everyone cheats, then the quota becomes totally inefficient and useless again. The price falls back to equilibrium price. And that's pretty much it. You gotta know that it's hard to use a quota and to find and punish cheaters. That's why producers have been lobbying government to use a quota to provide and provide monitoring to pun and punishment systems to make it work. But that's just so they can make more money. And that's all I want to teach you for today. In the next video, I'm going to go through subsidies with you guys. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.